Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome back to Menagerie Remastered. We are just exploring the various systems that we have access to now. Let's go ahead and head on back into space, go to the next planet in the in the uh, system. Have we been to this planet yet? No, we haven't. It is a uh, planet of teddy bears and actual street signs and such. Oh crap, there's an actual... It's hard for me to tell what's a creature and what is a um, and what's a NPC. So, um, and we'll finish this fight real quick. But it's it's just a matter of I'm not sure exactly where to go here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where to go here. So, uh, I guess we'll find out. It's not what I need to do. This place is not uh, tile-based like the previous ones. This is weird, actually. It's using an actual kind of hand-drawn background instead of the tile set, which the rest of the game uses. Uh, is there anything I was supposed to be doing in here? That's the that's the issue. I'm not seeing anything except maybe enemies. Can I go anywhere? This doesn't let me go anywhere. Well, I'm going to assume I can't do anything on this. Um, we'll head back out then. It's a dead end. Uh, do I go back to Nadine? Or do I look at the rest of this crap? Zorak. Let's hit Zorak first. Okay, now I'm back to having you know, an actual tile set. So, um, that's not what I need to do. Let's, uh, yeah, I can't destroy anything in the background anymore, so... Oh well. I think you can only destroy it when you're actually on a planet similar to the one you started on. I don't want to, I want to get into any fights here just yet. Not a lot I can do up here. I guess Zorak's a dead end. A lot of these places seem to be dead ends for now. Can we go up here? Yes, we can. That's not what I need to do. Yeah, I can't do anything with those. Uh, looks like I'm shit out of luck. Yeah kind of a whole lot of nothing up here. I see like some chests or something over there, I guess. I don't know if I can get to them though. Huh, is that a maze or something? I don't even think that's a place I can get to. No, it's not. Okay, well, I'm up and up and about. Uh let's head back to uh Nadine, I guess. The point of no return. I guess this is where I built my little ship earlier. Everything seems to be on fire, and I can't do anything. So, apparently, Nadine is destroyed somehow. Oh, wait a minute. There's a little uh, arrow showing me, I guess, where I need to go. Let's see if this person does anybody I need to know. I've been waiting for you. Thankfully, he has not yet decided to rampage this place. Whether because of some purpose he has in mind for this massive mail delivery planet, what? Or because he simply deems killing living things more satisfying, I couldn't say. But we should hurry. Behind me is the refuge plaza of Post Martia. It's a post office planet. Oh, God. Last I knew, your mother was in Parcel Bay 12. Hopefully, you'll find her. When you return, I am willing to answer any questions you may have for me. So, okay. Well, he's gone. Looking for Bay 12. <sighs> uh, there are arrows. I need to pay more attention to those. They, this game is really good about telling you where you can go, where you need to go. So, Hub 12.
Mom, you okay? Yes, it looks like our plan failed, though. Oh, you saw that, huh? That we failed to do what I had in mind is the least of my worries now. Good to see you're still on the ball. We should get out of here. One who calls himself Azarath wants, your, wants to help. I know the vizier. We were once good friends. Maybe we still are? I suppose I can interrogate about him about that if I feel it's necessary. What? I guess that's an odd way of putting it. Alright, you can forget your dream boat for a second. Let's at least get to the ship first. Hey, it's nothing like that, you smarty. I just miss an old friend. Is that such a sin? Can I say yes? No. Er, sorry. I'm a little distraught about this whole mess. You're right. Let's go. You can talk with him in person, then. And I can't really do anything here, so this is all basically could be covered with a cutscene. It's nice being able to poke around, though. Can I poke around in other places? Okay. Apparently not. Ow. You may not pass. Alright, I guess I'm just shit out of luck then. Oh, here we go. I can come in here. Leave me in peace. I'm definitely feeling pretty cool about now. Though mostly because my competitor is a drone born from some sort of sacrificial gambit to keep the universe, al universe alive at the cost of itself. All these other duty dudes ain't got a chance in hell. Though those Galaxian peacemakers are pretty cool. Looking all badass with their mouth guards and armor and shit. I have no idea what these people are talking about. My counterpart is so boring and sad. Having no emotions is just the suckiest. My voice may be gone. I may no longer be able to sing, but at least I can feel. Alright, these are people I have no idea about. So I'm just going to leave them to their thing. And keep going up here. I feel like I should explore more, but... Uh, there's only so much you can do. What does this guy say? Can you taste the soda? If yes, then I envy you. We of the nameless are dulled, both in sense and in self. I'm told by impetuous susurrations past self that I was deemed perfect in every way and was revered as some sort of god. That sounds ludicrous, but if it's that's a thing I could believe in that may just that may be fun to entertain, then I'll do whatever it takes to re retrieve the salvation of all sixteen of us seek kind of hopeless. Anyway. I guess I can ask around more, but eh. Let's follow the main course of the game for now. I am pleased to see you alive, Talismina. We have no time for pleasantries, Azrath. You know this as well as they do. And so then you also know as well as I do that your mission would be suicidal. So was their last mission, yet they stand here stronger than ever before. The ones you triumphed against blatantly overpowered you, yes. But they are orderly in routine, giving them large open areas of weakness. Zardal is, well, as you may know, no one know, you might know, no one knows him like I do. He had no guilt in committing one of the most offensive crimes in Galaxian society on multiple counts. I served as his conscience for years. I have never once seen anything in his eyes but hatred. Villains aren't ever incredibly complicated. They all have an honor code. With respect, Spooky, perhaps this is a villain you don't fully understand. He's shown more interest in his own death than in doing something against his will. So then it's simple. We just have to force him into doing something he... It's not always that simple. A long time ago, I was with Zadarl. Is that Zadarl or Zadari? We'll call it Zadarl for now. Zadarl on a, a diplomacy mission to Tekerlek. They were holding Galaxian children prisoner for wealth. When I told Zadarl of this mission, he just scowled. Against my orders, he violently murdered all of the Galaxian children and gave the pirates the ransom regardless. Oh, well, dude's pretty badass. Did any of them cry, by chance? Shudders. I'd say so. 
The point is that there's no rhyme or reason to what Zadarl does. He just does things randomly. I think it's Zadari, because it looks kind of like this eye over here. We'll call him Zadari then. Randomly, spontaneously, and completely. Is it possible he's, well, insane? If there were ever a shred of morality or empathy in the him master schema, I can assure you it's long since burned out in his years con of contained seething. Will you aid us, Azerath? This is likely the last time you and, Amy, you and I may be able to work together. That's my plan. I will aid you, albeit indirectly, in putting an end to Zadari's madness. I'll meet you at the Jupiter system in the Vermilion sector, Milky Way Galaxy. Wow, that's a fair way away. Why there? You'll see yourself soon enough. We'll meet you there. Godspeed, Azara. Good luck, Talismina. Let's go. Alright. Was this my ship? Wait, where's my ship? Ah, here we go. Hello, Safael. You know this guy? He sure does. Greetings, Nadinians. My name is Saphiel. I am co commonly referred to as the Shaper of Worlds. I am one of the six demigods which tend to the universe. My task is to help out in one of those three astrolives whenever I'm not creating blank slate worlds for the living dimension. I'm sure you have gathered by now the enemy you face, but are you aware of his powers? Knowing the enemy is the best tactic. Once you know an enemy well, you can defeat them with the knowledge you have. Such is true in just about every war, every conflict. Myself and some buddies have gathered info on your new enemy, and with it, the briefing for your new mission. He can time travel, just to start things off. Wait, really? Of course. How else do you think he was able to sabotage you before his current self was even free? The souls he has absorbed have made him capable on several fronts. His ability to travel through time should be the least of your worries. He has nearly the same power as our creator, the guardian of the universe, Infinite Fold. He wields the force of the blue sun itself. What other powers does he have? A universal level teleport and super, super speed and visibility, multiple devastating blue sun attacks, including, including the cyan reaches. He's near indestructible, possesses godly strength, and of course, aforementioned time travel. It's lucky for all mortal races that he seems content with savoring destruction a bit at a time. If he decided to destroy everything, only the Six and our Creator could remain. Maybe the Six can help us destroy him. Perceptive, that is exactly our plan. Yassandre, the Fable Druid. Yassandre. Good tidings, Nadin Nadinians. Blue, the Spellweaver. I hope you like being cooperative. Galdath, the Lightbearer. My hood gives me badass points. Well, these are like, uh, these are like, uh, versions of your own party. That's interesting. Seradeth, the Nightbringer. Hey, how you doing? And finally, Death, the Grim Reaper. I prefer Grim, but any name is fine. Heck, I'd be down with bubbles. It's been a long time since we have all been within cosmic reach of each other. The Origination Council is once again within the same vicinity. Oh, so that's what Spooky meant by the Origination Council. Does this mean? Well, yeah, we've all contributed to your cause, but we alone can't take the credit. The enemy of our enemy, as Spooky would put it, was one to was one to come up with this plan. Too bad it backfired horribly. Hey now, no need to be such a wise ass. If I recall, you killed a lot of people to make this happen, so you're just as culpable as anyone here. Fuck. We have all contributed to the slaughter as I and Seredith have contributed to what resulted in several before. Yeah, but they were actually funny and within our control. I admit, Having some idiots worship a spoon or a goblet of be better yet a goblet or better yet a toilet seat is pretty funny. Uh, are you serious? Is that object that foretold the, the menagerie actually like just a thing you made as a joke? 
Eh, most relics of divination are, but the toilet seat was a special case. We both worked on it to incite violence, so you'd have less enemies to deal with, but also briefly foreshadow the future. Oh yeah, sorry to say, Gerald, but that spoon? It's mo mostly just stupid shit me and Serideth came up with. Your planet actually didn't take it that badly, though. But, yeah, seriously. Biggest bunch of pussies ever, Zero Ten, not, would not waste divinium on them again. Earth was funny, that If you ladies would, are done talking, we do actually have a mission here. So Earth is in the same continuum and has already been destroyed? Jesus. Alright. Also, you will now address me as Bubbles. Bubbles sounds like fun police. No fun allowed, ever. And I thought I was the only one who believed in exaggerated sarcasm. I thought we actually might have grown a little since last time we were together. Whatever was I thinking. Filthy peasant, don't use your high and mighty sarcasm on me. I have rabid robot chipmunks with scythes. Oh no, not the scythes. Anything but the scythes. Anyone notice how obnoxiously similar my eyes are to the one we're discussing how to deal with? We may as well live in Uncanny Valley. Alright, we can continue this dumbass demigod downer party once we actually do something relevant. What the upright fuck? Aren't you supposed to be gods? Ah, uh, yeah, so? I think she's asking if gods are actually allowed to have fun, which they're not. We are demigods. Oh, Origin has fun. If he was bored with it, I don't think he'd just keep making universes happen. Point is, mortals just assume we're, go we're going to be like super serious and wise for some dumb reason, despite our flaws being carried onto them. The only entity without flaws is Origin, but you could even say from a mortal's perspective that he does have flaws. Flaw, in its psychological subtext, is a very mortal concept. Anyways, thanks to my masterful, masterful information gathering, I know where you can find the Zadari. I've already told the one who is heading there now. He'll be at Jupiter's asteroid belt in the Vermilion Sector, in the Milky Way Galaxy, a dangerous battlefield. Oh, by the way, you're all going to die. Bubbles, you've really got to stop trolling. Oh yes, when I do it, that's just pure evil. But when you do it, holy shit, guess what, it's a miracle. Oh, I didn't know giving us some friendly advice was fun policing. I'm sorry. Bubbles is just acting out because his new name gives him the right to act like a doofus. Yeah, pretty much. You can all call me Grim again in 400 years. I think Bubbles suits you. I think Bubbles is a great name for you, actually. I know, but by degree of future canon, I have to change it back before my future appearance in another story. Quit breaking the fourth wall and referencing events from 400 years in the future, goddammit. It's offensive, bro. Uh, no way, Cephael. Also, Origin looks like Tyrael. Quiet! Anyway, good luck with your quest. We'll meet you when you find the courage to land on Jupiter's asteroid belt. By which he means never. We'll never talk again. Sorry. Shut up, douche. Alright. That was interesting. So, to clarify, Mum is the one the Origination Council spoke of, and now you know, the gods are on our side. Blue was contacted by Tack through shenanigans, and we all came up with the idea. Aha, it all makes sense now. No, it doesn't. I have no idea what's going on at this point. The storyline went off the deep end a while back, and I, I haven't been able to get onto it uh, again since. Oh well, if you're watching, and you know, uh, you know, you can follow this thread of this storyline, Remember to leave me a comment in this in the comment section below. For now, we'll continue onward. Before we march on to our deaths, I have to retrieve something now which I couldn't which before I couldn't writing and this is kind of convoluted too. Kitty caboose to to Galaxia. Mew, okay, hee hee. Uh so it's autopiloting now. Are you sure? It's not a pretty sight. Mum's seen some shit. She'll be fine. He did He did do quite a number on this place, didn't he? You don't sound incredibly sad. I'm not, really. I'm honestly annoyed that they got to enjoy a merciful death. 
Wow, that's, uh, nasty. You know nothing. Back down, Fury. Mum has reason to hate these guys. Let's head to Starport 17. Okay. I guess I'll just follow the little, uh, the little, uh, arrows. Back to, like, the only place I can go on a galaxy, and these planets aren't exactly huge. They're just a couple of, uh, a couple of rooms. Wait. What's in here? Is this something I can go into? Nope. Apparently not. Oh. That was a rift I could go into. So, what did we come here for? Firstly, a device of mine. I was relieved of it when I was branded a traitor, but now that brands are irrelevant, I can retrieve it. You got tax calculation. It's not much use to me now, so I want you to have it. Now I just have one last thing to check on. I've never seen your mum like that. What did I even say? Ah, uh, yeah, you really had a nerve. I've rarely seen her that angry myself, though I know why she was upset. Can you tell me, so I don't make the same mistake twice? I think you'd be better if you asked her yourself. I wasn't alive for it. Okay, we're all set. To Jupiter we go. Wait, um... Forever smooth. I want to say that I didn't mean to upset you or make you feel bad about that vindictive stuff earlier. I was just... I'm just in a bit of a state right now. Uh, we all are. We all are from all the things that have been happening. Oh, this is about earlier. Well, it's fair enough of you to be judgmental. You couldn't have known. I still don't. Maybe you could share with us what happened so we won't make the same mistakes? Hmm. It wasn't that long ago. Damn it, Mum. It's like over ten years ago. All right. I'll tell you on the way to Jupiter. I still feel nervous wandering this place. All right. I suppose it can wait. Let's go to space. Uh, we're looking for what? the This place, which is new, I guess. This wormhole will warp us, warp us to the Vermilion Sector, which contains a regular sun, eight completely useless planets, and one lifey planet named Earth, along with a large asteroid belt. Proceed. Oh, so we're going to Earth now. All right, sure. Loading. So we're going to actual Earth this time. Jupiter. Our destiny lies ahead. Fiori, you and Mum have things to discuss. Yes, I suppose I should broach this now. We may not get another chance. Then tell me. You're awfully bossy, but yes, all right. It was twenty years ago. I'd been a part of the Galaxian Directorate for a few years when the Pink Sun Project was approved. As a sylph with prophetic abilities, it was my solemn duty to inform of impending disaster. Two of my best friends were the lead researchers for the project. It, it was conflicting to see these innocent creatures we'd captured suffer for our own gain. I tried my best not to question it. One night, I received a vision of the facility being torn apart by a ferocious explosion. I tried to warn Magina and Asarath, but Magina didn't listen, and Adashi told me if, I w if it was that vivid of a vision, it was probably going to happen anyway. Only shortly after being dismissed, I saw the perpetrator of the vision. It was me. I tried my best to fight this belief, but the more I tried to suppress it, the more the tortured screams of the nymphs being vivisected for research drummed in my conscience. I'd welcome, I'd become moral, and my branch trained to that of a traitor. I was defective, knowing I now had no choice in the matter, and desperate to obey my moral compass. I freed what nymphs I could be saved, and put a merciful end to the others in their torture. It was so long ago, but I remember the court case as though it were yesterday. Robotic crackle. I guess. 
Court is now in session for the defendant, Tak Talismina. Galaxian traitor Tak Talismina for single-handedly destroying several blocks of Galaxian property, several expensive units of research equipment, and all research and progress of the Pink Sun Project. How does the defendant plead? I don't plead. If the immoral research of a sun's angelic creatures doesn't phase you, if vivisecting innocent extraterrestrials to further research into a pointless cause doesn't make you feel that you too should be judged, then I'm no longer one of you. I am sorry, Azarath and Mayina. It's clear to me that I no longer belong here. Goodbye. With that, I left. Hey, font change. The reason Mum was upset at your questioning, Fury, is because she sacrificed everything she had to save many of your kind, from those you said may deserve pity, no less. It just took me by surprise. It seems my son has been an influence on you, be it for better or worse. You're right, though. I am sorry. I had no idea. I know that's all in the past, anyway. Let's let's now make sure the future is secure. Right. So I guess I can cruise around here. Was this supposed to be Pluto? But here's a here's a thing. Jupiter is there. And Neptune or Saturn Uranus Pluto, which is not not technically a planet anymore. Uh, we got Earth. And a very fucked up solar system. And the Sun, the actual Sun. So we've only really got one place to go, and that's Jupiter. Are we ready for this? Sure. Alright, Kitty Caboose to Asteroid Belt. Let's go ahead and save the game. And, uh,. Replenish our uh, life and talk to this guy. Greetings, Menagerie. Not far beyond me lies the dwelling of your nihilist. Archbishop Zadari has been, from what I can tell, stationed here for quite some time. Whether he is expecting you or just enjoys chilling here is anyone's guess. I myself will be your last obstacle. I must test your strength to see if you are capable. If you can't defeat me, you have no hope in hell against him. No mercy this time, I take it. Perceptive. You fight or die. You're no use to anyone if you can't do what it is you need to do. Well then, let's do it. I agree with Spooky's unusual bout of enthusiasm. Let's make this happen. Good. Bravery is one thing you will definitely need. Now fight, Menagerie. Fight as you have never fought before. And if I don't win against this guy, I'm probably going to have to go back and do some grinding, but I can do that off screen. So let's let's see how we how we deal with this. This is your first test schema. Give it all you've got for it may be the last fight you can win. Okay, you've got 10 turns to live. He's got 66,666 health. He's weak versus blood attacks. I got 10 turns to live. I don't think that I'm actually going to be able to do that, but um we'll see. We'll get him into uh Frigid Warden state. And then we will go ahead and do um, Inspiring Roar on everybody. We will use her powers to do a Arcane Conduit on everybody. He will, I guess, do a, uh, do a Gambit. And Spooky ain't got nothing that's blood related, so he'll do Worm him. Oh shit! I may be able to do this after all. That was four four grand of uh, four thousand hit points right off the bat. Ouch! So this may not be that good a deal either. That that just almost killed everybody. 
Um, what we will do is we'll do one for all on everybody and Gerald will once again use Gambit. So we've got another 6,000, so we've got 10,000 in, but but this guy is basically killing everybody. Yeah, I can't do that. Party was defeated. Alright. So I'm going to have to throw a few ideas around in there, uh, and I will see you on the other side. Alright, try this again, shall we? And, um, we will try to do, uh, Yassandre's Calliope. Get everybody regenerating. Go ahead and get Arcane Conduit going on everybody. Gerald is going to... Well, he's going to try to do something else this time. He's going to do uh, Aim Strike. And then Aim Strike again. And Spooky is going to try to Time Warp Gerald. See, between that and the, the thing that I've equipped on Gerald to go ahead and boost his... Or the, one of the things I've equipped on Gerald's already giving him a second turn, so... As long as Spooky remains alive, that's alright. Um, we'll go ahead and do... Savage Maul, I guess. Gerald is going to do aim strike times three. Actually, no. He's going to do aim strike times two, and then he's going to do ascension, which is going to give him a certain number of turns of invulnerability. So, and then Spooky is going to get. Uh, I want to say warm him up. Because that'll let me boost up uh, my regeneration. So far, so good on Gerald. And there goes Spooky. Gerald's really taken, you know, taking it well. Let me try to heal Fatty up with a potion, and then we will switch to Gambit. And Gambit. The Gambit does... I think it actually does slightly less damage. Because it's 3 times 2,000, that's 6,000, as opposed to 2,700, 2,700, and like 900 apiece, I think. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue doing uh, Aim Strike, then. I've got him down halfway. The benefit with C, it, that, sh that is not that's not what I meant. Then the gambit does do a lot more damage. The only benefit with aim strike is that it actually allows you to uh, to regenerate the mana between attacks. But if I'm not going to survive, then the the energy really doesn't matter, does it? Come on. And there goes uh, my double turn war off. And my ma my energy con conservation, so... Oh, he's got... F oh, wow, this may be it. I should have used the other one. Oh! Good, I won! Thank God! Alright, leveled everybody up. I've beat this guy. Excellent. You may proceed. So, you will be helping us, won't you? I will, albeit from a distance. Just don't mention me when talking to Zardari. I don't want him to suspect a thing. 
All right, good luck. You too, Talismina. Nothing left to do but face the destroyer of Echelon on his own turf. And I will do that in the next episode. This has been the RPG Crawler with a Menagerie Remastered. If you like what you've seen, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and keep your eye out for more Longsform playthroughs. Until next time, take care and goodbye.